Well, welcome back to a, another session of our sixth grade painting project. Um, I'm hoping everybody is doing well. Uh, we are in the seventh session of the painting project, and uh, as a quick review, uh, some of you may have missed some of this. We did our primary colors up in here, and then we went to the lower corner where we did our secondary colors, the uh, green, orange, and violet. So we go red, yellow, blue for our primaries, green, orange, violet for the secondaries. Then we went to our tertiary colors. These are all the small dots on the color wheel. So red, violet, blue, violet, yellow, orange, red, orange, yellow, green, and blue, green. Okay, and uh, that worked out pretty well for us. Uh, and then we went uh, to uh, a tinting scale where we started with a color and made it lighter by adding white to it with each step. And then we went to our shading scale where it got darker as we added black to it with each step. And then we went to, uh, after that, the complements where we painted this orange and this blue, which are opposite colors. And then analogous colors, any three colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So we picked uh, yellow and then to the left of it was yellow orange and then to the right of it on the color wheel is yellow green. And then we came over here and we did a triad. In this case our triad was made out of tertiary colors and so and they form a triangle on the color wheel. So we did red violet, yellow orange and blue green which brought us to the warm and cool colors and the warm and cool colors are in this area. So the warm colors which are reds, oranges and yellows. So we picked red for that we made some orange and added white to it and it gave it this kind of salmon color and that was kind of neat and then we used just straight up red as our third warm color and that brought us to our cool colors and we began with blue green as a cool color and I think we added white as well to that thus making it more of a turquoise color or aqua color so we have to finish out our cool colors then you get a chance to pick out any color you want to go in the cup and then we'll do some uh, um, decorative work and we may be done by the end of this session here alright so let's go back to here so if blue green is a cool color and we look throughout our entire painting and we are trying to identify areas or a color that we don't have very much of represented that is also a cool color that meets the requirement so I'm looking around the painting and I notice that the only place we've got blue violet is down here so my choice is going to be blue violet to go in there so we've got some in the corner something kind of separately working in the middle there and so I'm going to take my mix card I'm going to place my paint card where you can see it but normally you should not put your paint card on top of your painting it's a hazardous idea okay we want to make blue violet so we want to make violet that's got more blue in it than red. So let's take three scoops of the blue, generous scoops of blue, and then we want to clean out our brush because we don't want to pollute the other puddle of paint. And uh, another class may be using this paint uh, when we are done with it. So you have to, uh, you know, have some respect for them too, and not muss up all their paint. So we got three blues. Now we're going to take. Uh, maybe one red, not very much, okay, that's a pretty good dip. And what we should come out with is something that is extremely dark bluish purple, uh, kind of an indigo color or navy blue. And if you get grape jelly purple, well, then we're going to have to put some more blue in it. And it looks like I'm going to end up with maybe with grape jelly purple right off the bat. That is amazing. If I were trying to make it, I probably couldn't on the very first try. But what I do have here is kind of typical violet. So what I want to do is uh, I want to add some more blue to that. So I need to rinse out my brush because I don't want to pollute the colors. Dry it thoroughly. And then let's uh, I'm go back to my blue puddle. This ought to be enough to change it to a blue violet. All right, yeah, now I'm getting something here. Now, so we want a cool color. Remember also when we're mixing colors to scrape that color into a tight little pile in the middle. Make sure all the strands have been mixed in so you don't get colors that change right in the middle of trying to paint them. I am going to clean out my brush. 
And then in order to make this look a little bit more visually interesting, I think we should add some white to this. Okay, so one good dip of white right there into the middle of it, and it should give us a color like lavender or periwinkle. I'm going to scrape all of the colors together. It's kind of a slate blue kind of as well, so it makes a... Uh, you never really know precisely. You can have a good idea based on your knowledge of color theory, but sometimes you just can't predict what you'll get. Precisely, that is. Alright, so we're just trying to s scrape this into a tight little pile like our paintbrush was maybe a little broom and this paint was a tiny little pile of sand that we're trying to scrape up. Okay, now that's pretty good. Uh, uh, that is definitely lavender or periwinkle or something, but it's also definitely, excuse me, sorry for that brief interruption. Ironically, that was Warner Middle School calling with a one call. Okay, let's get back to what we were doing here. So we just mixed up the color that we spent all our time figuring out, and we've got this periwinkle or lavender color. It's definitely a cool color because it's a variation on blue-violet, right? So let's uh, take that and uh, paint it into this space right here. Where our, that notch kind of pokes up into the blue-green we made in the previous session. So I'm going to move this out of my way so I don't put my arm in it and also so I get better control when I paint. Okay, so uh, we are really, this prog project has made extraordinary progress in the time that we have been on it. Seven sessions uh, is, is uh, probably less than what it would take in the physical classroom. It was just, uh, you know, always interruptions like there was just this here in the E classroom just a moment ago. <coughs> Excuse me, my voice is getting ragged, ladies and gentlemen. I've made over a hundred videos, and I'm starting to get worn down. Okay, so just, you know, gently moving the paint around very carefully, using only the fine point of the brush, you know, Typically, you have to go back and reload the brush a great deal if you're using heavy body paint, such as uh, tempera or acrylics. Okay, that color looks really nice on the projector. They're kind of a slate, uh, slate gray or a bit of a uh, periwinkle blue or some sort of a lavender, which would be violet. So some of these colors, and they. I know when you're looking at it on the projector, uh, you may not get the uh, full impact of the color. <coughs> However, it's uh, it's pretty accurate. It's being pretty accurately displayed uh, based on what I see in front of me with my eyes. Okay, I'm going to uh, change my position here so I can paint more accurately. Now, in your case, if you're uh, sitting at your desk or sitting at your workspace, you could just turn the painting around carefully. Uh, by because I'm making a you know a video, I really can't turn the painting around. Uh, however, I can uh, move around the painting uh, since I have uh, a chair that's got that can roll around while I'm doing these jobs. Okay, so progress being made here on the cool colors. Now I've got to come up with one more cool color. So we've got blue-green we've made, we've made blue-violet. So what would be a good choice for one of the other cool colors? And that would be one that we would have to look around and see if we'd have it represented or not. And I'm going to remove my paint cards here so I can make that determination. Okay, well, pure blue has been in there once, twice, three times. 
pure green, which is this color, has been in there once. Because this is blue-green and this is blue-green. So my opinion is, it's going to have to be a green color of some sort. Strangely though, um, you know, we did blue-violet. We did blue. We're going to have to make some green. Uh, and then we'll see how that goes. So we want to make something that looks like permanent green. Uh, or true green, like forest green. So let's rinse out our brush. And in this case, we're going to make... Uh, better make sure the brush is dry. Some bad things can happen if the brush is not dry. Uh, so let's uh, look at making uh, taking three of the yellows okay and just a uh, maybe one good dip of the blue so rinse out your brush so you don't end up polluting the paint for the next individual has to use it since we're taking group lessons here and let's take just one pretty good serving of the blue and we should get uh, pretty close to something like uh, forest green or John Deere green, something similar to that. And we're scraping it all into a nice tight pile here, right? Not trying to smear it all over the card. It makes the paint last longer this way, plus it mixes it better. You smear it around, you get the perfect color eventually, but what will happen is your paint will begin drawing before you can get a chance to paint with it. That's pretty good looking green. And I'm going to uh, scrape some of the residue out of my brush and continue to get all the little strands of yellow and blue included in there. I'm, you know, I'm pretty satisfied with that green, so I'm going to rinse out my paintbrush and dry it, and I'm going to apply it. Uh, so, but I might put just a little dash of white into that, or maybe even darken it, make it like Kelly green. I'm going to go with one tiny, tiny dot of black. So, that's why it's important to watch the instruction. Let's see, we've got just, it's probably going to take a little more than that. So, I've got just the tiniest bit of black on my brush. I'm going to mix that in and see what happens. It should really darken that color up really quickly. Yes, it's making something like an olive green now. That's really neat. Like algae. Nothing says cool or cold color like algae, does it? Alright, that's the jade green, the army green I'm looking for right there. Okay, that's going to go in here. So let's take our jade green, or our uh, what is uh, merely green, permanent green, with a little bit of black added into it. It's more like a color that we would call sap green in uh, oil paint. Very versatile color, but a little bit transparent. Uh, That's really interesting there. I didn't expect it to come out precisely that way. However, it did, and so that's what I want to live with. Sometimes you know, a l you have a good idea what's going to happen, but you can't 100% predict what's going to happen. Okay, we're all right here. So this project has been very popular uh, over the years. Uh, with the students. It's also been a excellent uh, project for do teaching color theory and uh, you know, brush control, uh, color mixing, how to apply the paint, uh, following directions. We start with that on the very first, put the dot in the middle of the picture, uh, you know, when we first started this painting in seven or what will probably maybe be eight sessions. All right. Well, but I got to say, this has been very successful so far. But we don't have the interruptions normally. But we had one today, and uh, we didn't let it take too much class time up. 
and that's good too. So we're going to minimize the amount of time that is lost to interruptions and maximize the amount of time that we spend in production. More production, less interruption. Kind of rhymes. Alright, so just gotta be patient. It's better to paint good than it is to paint fast. Unless you're painting good while you're painting fast. Most most people can't do it. I struggle with it. So I just try to paint good. There we go. Pretty good. Okay, let's finish this part up. And try to use the fine point of the brush make the markings with. That's where all the control is at. If you're mashing down real hard on the brush, then you're asking for some control issues. So anytime you find yourself using anything but the lightest touch with the brush, then you need to stop, focus on what you're doing, and then go back and attempt to move the paintbrush with, with uh, intention and authority. So it does what you want it to do instead of whatever happens. If it's just whatever happens, then uh, you started to lose what we call the artistic intention. That's why uh, animals like monkeys and elephants and dogs can't really make art. Because they don't have the intention to make art. They normally have the intention to get the treat for going through the motion of making art. But that's not real the same. the difference between making art and just scribbling is intention. That means we set out to make a piece of artwork, we planned it out, we thought it out, then we took our plan and we acted it out. And then if the end of it all comes together, it may not be a good piece of artwork sometimes, but we have made artwork simply because we had the intention to make artwork when we sat out. Alright, that looks pretty good for my army green. I'm going to have to go with it. Let's see, now we're down to uh, a couple of shapes left here. Uh, and these are for student choice. So it's up to you to make your mug whatever color you want. However, it cannot be a color which touches it. And do not make it black the uh, coffee inside of it is going to have to be black. So I guess if I was going to uh, do anything right now, I'm going to take a little bit of black and I'm going to put it into the middle of the cup to explain what I want you to do. Okay, so in that little area right there is our dark beverage, whatever it may be. Hot beverage it has a uh, steam coming off of it as I was noticing. Okay, so I'm trying to just get that effect that there's like something in the cup. The something in the cup effect. Okay, that's not too bad. Let's see if I can bend that line. Ooh! Bend that line just a little bit. Okay, so now here's the rules on deciding which colors you're going to put into this. It can be any color you want, but it can't be a color which is touching it. Now that's going to be kind of difficult in some circumstances. So the cup can't be green, can't be violet, can't be yellow, can't be red, can't be orange, and can't be green. Hmm. That kind of limits our colors. But the one color that is missing down in this corner is blue. Okay, even in this quadrant right here, it kind of intrudes into it a bit, but this uh, quadrant right down here has zero blue in it. So I'm going to take my blue and my mixing card 
and I am going to uh, mix some blue and uh, some white together until I get to say a baby blue color so I'm going to take let's see probably two large scoops maybe three large scoops of the blue Then I'm going to take one large scoop of white and I'm going to mix these together. I'm going to try to put it here where I won't put it on wet paint. Okay, so we should, with three scoops of blue and one scoop of white, once we mix that together, we should get something that looks like a baby blue color. Which is also something we don't have in our picture yet as well. I'll uh, see, there we go. Sometimes you predict what will happen and it does happen. Oh, that's a very attractive color, kind of like light blue in your Crayola color pencil kit. Or if you're a sports fan, North Carolina blue. I don't know, uh, Michael Jordan. Alright, now although my brush is kind of uh, is kind of loaded heavily with this is a large area so I'm going to go ahead and start painting my baby blue in. and you should not be uh, resting your painting card on the uh, surface of your painting I'm simply doing this so you can see my colors and what I am doing uh, as I paint this in Extraordinary progress here, ladies and gentlemen. It seems like whenever we put the uh, white paint in with another color, it really improves its opacity, which is a bit of a surprise to me. But it shouldn't be that big of a surprise to me, I wouldn't think. Okay, so we're just trying to get nice, smooth edges to our lines, to the marks we make with the paintbrush. Sometimes you got to hold your breath. Just right for a second. Uh, oh, here's my paint over here. I'm going to the wrong place to get paint. There we go. Now that came out pretty good. Okay, so let's just keep on uh, carefully painting in what we're making here. I'm going to go down here for a while and get some of this excess paint off of my paintbrush. And I made plenty of paint. I don't know if I'm going to be using all of that baby blue color here. Bums me out. I like the color, but you know, there's only so much paint I can put on with it. Okay. Very light pressure. Only the fine point of the brush. Maybe getting tired of hearing me say that by now. I can understand that. All right, so that's coming along nicely. Let's pick up a little bit more here and get the bottom. Oh, fantastic! Alright, so, yeah, I hope you're getting good good results here with your uh, project. And if you're struggling with it, simply pause the video and, and check it out carefully or slow it down or replay it. So 
so that you get, you know, you can keep up with the instruction. I know sometimes it seems like I'm going at really fast speeds, and I probably am, uh, but these are, you know, video demonstrations. They're not meant to be actually done at the speed at which I'm doing them. Uh, if you were you know, an adult student, you might be able to keep up with these uh, and actually make some good uh, uh, good projects, uh, although for most sixth graders it would be a very complex task to try to work at this particular pace and still get good results. Okay, so I like my baby blue mug right there. I'm going to continue with it by painting in this handle over here carefully. such as this or you know just the tiny littlest markings make a make a huge difference in the overall beauty of the work and so that's very unappreciated portion of art making uh, is the patience and the focus and the long attention span concentration aspect of it that's what that's probably why most people are not really involved in the arts that much they simply do not have that long patience in attention span uh, it took Michelangelo and he had some help to get started on it but he uh, it took him five years to finish the Sistine Chapel ceiling which is a masterpiece it took Leonardo 16 years to paint the Mona Lisa. He carried around with him his whole life. He just wasn't, he never thought it was really done. And people look at it and they're like, I don't see how he didn't think it was done. Okay, now on the last little portion of this, I'm going to paint the back edge of it in here, but I might just use a little dot of black just the tiniest dot to deaden that intensity so it looks like it's a little bit shadowed in there although I'm not really going for the super realistic look but I am looking for maybe a slightly darker version of what we've been using here now this is going to be tricky work okay I gotta get some of that off of there there's way too much paint on that brush and then our last thing that we'll do probably for today and then we'll come back in the next session and do some decoration work will be to paint in the last little bit of the steam coming out of the cup there behind us and we have to also pick a color which is not a color which it's in contact with so that can be a little bit tricky to do the logic and problem solving part of this sometimes Okay, so a, a baby blue coffee mug, some coffee, so the steam coming out of the mug cannot be baby blue, it will have to be some other color. And there's a green right next to it, so it probably shouldn't be a green. minor flaw which I will correct right now which is driving me crazy to look at although you may not even notice it until I do something about it but it's uh, uh, the back edge of the cup kind of messes with me so I'm going to take just a dot of black and I'm going to go over just this tiny area right there so I kind of paint it in 
to the paint it into the black area a little bit. Same thing right here. I gotta close up that little space in between those two. So it's really the little things that I guess make stuff look better. Uh, okay, now we've got to make one more decision here before we move on, although we may be getting close to the end of our session today. And in fact, we are, so we've got just enough time to make a decision about something else. Now, I still have some of this periwinkle left over. And, of course, there's none of that going on over there. So what I think I might do with this is alter it. Let's make a, a different color with it. So I've, if I've got this in there, what would happen if I took some of this green and mixed it together? That's a good question. Let's see. So put some green into the periwinkle or the lavender and mix it up and see what happens. I'll just kind of keep it in the middle there and see what it does. Well, it's kind of hard. It's neutralizing it, and it's making a kind of a, almost a blue-green effect of some sort there. It's kind of, kind of a, just a flat greenish effect. Okay, now let's see what happens if we put some, let's see, let's see what happens if we put a little bit of black in with that. Let's see what happens. I'll bet it's going to make a just a mess. All right, now we're getting now we're getting some sort of a, yeah, a grayish, greenish, purplish color, kind of taupe or neutral gray. But you know what? It's not unattractive, so I'm going to go with it because I think it's not such a bad color. So it's kind of a weird kind of a not even olive. It's some sort of a strange color. So that's the color I'm going to go with because I'm just trying to make up a color to go in here that is not like any color that touches it. So this is a grayish green. Isn't that funny? Okay, because I did put black and white together in the, into that color combination. So I guess that makes some sense. That would turn it gray. But it originally had that lavender mixed in with some green that we had made previously. Alright, i got to wipe out my brush. It is nasty, soggy. Okay, that's much better. And finish off here with my taupey, neutral, grayish color. Okay, so, see, sometimes you can just experiment with colors and you get something you would not expect. And different types of paints will behave in different manners. So, the uh, paint we're using today may act differently than paint we may use in a different project. So, you can't always uh, predict precisely what will happen. You can only kind of estimate what you think will happen. And that's what makes it an art and not a science. Okay, we're on the verge of having every compartment, every shape in this painting done. And that is a huge achievement. In seven sessions. Now we will have to take one more session and we will be adding some decorative, decorative touches to this so that when we were done with it, we could go back and ask ourselves, well, there we go, ask ourselves questions about it, like, did we have line, color, value? Does it have all the things in it that we covered on the very first lesson, if you think back long ago? And that lesson was design. It was all about putting colors and shapes and lines and curved lines and straight lines, all those types of... Uh, elements of art and principles of design together to make artwork. And that's all we've been doing for the last you know, nine weeks, pretty much. Okay, that looks I'm going to try to... I like for those little pointy areas of my paintings. A little pointy. Now, some of you may be able to relate to that. Maybe some of you 
will not. Okay, that looks like that's all we're going to get here for today. So that's been a great session. And in the next session, uh, we will finish this project up. So we've made tremendous uh, progress on it all. And I appreciate your efforts, everybody. So I will talk to you in the next session of 6th Grade Art. Have a good day.